Now that we have our form created for users to submit to do items, in this video, we're gonna look at protecting our API routes using the context of who the user is, as well as associating those new records with a given user. Now, if you wanna follow along with the entire series, make sure to go back and check out part one. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and get started. So we need to do two things in our code. Let's close out several of these tabs and let's open up our create to do function. So the first thing we want to do is we want to grab the user or the one of the things we want to do is grab the user from the session. And it's actually going to look very similar to what we did up here, almost exactly the same. But the second thing we want to make sure is that the user cannot create a to do if they're not logged in. So we can do all the protection on the front end that we want to to hide that form. But on the back end, now we need to verify that if this request comes in, there's actually a logged in user there. So what we we'll want to do is import the auth zero package from our utils directory. So utils auth zero. So we'll import that thing. And then it's really cool because this auth zero package comes with a function called require authentication. And we can wrap this entire callback function with this require authentication. What this thing is going to do is it's basically going to reject any request that comes into this endpoint if the user is not logged in. And we can actually test this out. So now that we've got that in place, we can come back over to Postman and we can make a request to create to do and make this a get request. And then inside of the body, we can have the description and just say, this is a test. And now we'll send this request along. So we'll go ahead and send this. And what should come back is we get a not authenticated. So just with this one hook, this one function, now we're able to verify that the user must be logged in if they make a request to this endpoint. And so if we come back to our application, we should be able to test this in here, authenticated to do. And if we add this, this should actually go all the way through. So we see it did. So with that in place, the last thing we wanna do is actually grab the user from that session. So in this case, I'm going to automatically go ahead and destructure from auth zero dot get session and pass in the request there and I missed uh, equals here. And the reason I can uh, go ahead and automatically do this is uh, with this require authentication, this is making sure that there is a session and there is a user object on that session before we even get to this function. So with this user in place, now when we create this record, we can update user ID with the user dot sub. Remember that sub property is the unique identifier for this user. So let's go in and uh, let's add another thing. So authenticated to do with user ID. Let's add this thing. It should go through here. And then inside of Airtable, now we're actually able to see that record associated with this user. All right, so that is working out really well. Now, the other aspect of this is now that I am a logged in user and I'm tracking which logged in user created which item, I want to make sure that when we load the to-dos that get shown in here, they only load the ones that come uh, with that user. So let's open back up our index.js file. And when we do this to-dos query, we want to add a little bit of a filter formula in here to be able to only get to-dos that come from the user. So what we'll do is inside of the select, uh, there is a filter by formula property, and then we'll add in the actual filter by formula. So this will say, uh, we want to get to do's where the user ID property is equal to, and then I'm using ES6 back ticks in here so that now I can do a variable interpolation. So I'll do session.user.sub. And then one of the tricky things with Airtable is this actually needs to go inside of quotes. So this thing here. So we've got where the user ID equals the sub, the unique identifier for that user. Now, the only thing that is a little bit off in here is we're only going to make this request if that user actually is logged in. So what we'll do is we'll grab our to-dos or initialize them to an empty array. And then we'll say if session.user, so if there is that actual user property, now we'll go and update those to-dos. And this actually will need to go all inside of this try and we get a little bit of this formatting and then we'll just get rid of this con. So what we're saying is we wanna get the logged in user. So we've got the session up here 
if there is an actual user on that session, so if session is there and there is a user property, then we'll go ahead and query those to do's based on that user. So session.user.sub matches the user ID property. And uh, then we'll still return the same things down here. So let's give this a shot. Let's refresh our page. And what we should see is we'll only see one to do here, the one that is tied to this user. And we see that is true. So just to show you in Airtable, these other records still exist, but now we're just making sure that when we load a user's to do's, we're only getting the ones that match that user. Opened up the wrong tab there. This is the one we're looking at. So we've made sure that only users that are logged in can create to do's, but we also want to do the same thing for updating and deleting to do's as well. We don't really care as much about reading that can be. So now that we've updated our logic for creating a to do to require authentication, we can do the same thing in our get to do. So if we open this up and uh, we can just copy over a few of these lines. So let's copy over our import of all zero and then let's copy this require authentication. So this will require authentication to be able to access this function. Now, depending on your use case, you could have there be a read, uh, a public read endpoint, but in this case, we're only letting users read things that belong to them. So we'll do the same thing we did before. We will destructure our user object since we know that the user is logged in by the time they get here. And we will call uh, auth0.get session. So we'll have that user object and then we'll do our select and we'll have that same filter by that we did over here. So we can actually just grab this whole select piece and replace the select that is in here. So we'll paste it in, got one extra period there. And instead of session.user, this will just be the user since we've already destructured that thing. So what this should mean is if we come over to Postman and we call get to do's and we make this a get request and send this along, we should see a not authenticated uh, but this should still work if the user is logged in. So we've got this working inside of our get to do's. Now we'll do the same thing inside of create and delete. So inside of, or excuse me, in our update and delete. So let's open our update here. And then I uh, will copy, copy a couple of these lines of code. So we'll copy our import and then we'll copy the auth zero require authentication and we'll wrap that entire thing. Go ahead and close this out down here. And then we will also get the user and we won't really reference this yet. We'll come back to this in a second, but at least in this case, we're making sure that the user is authenticated in our update. And then in our delete, we'll do the same thing. So we'll copy in our import and I'm just kind of copying these in because I think we've written enough import statements in this course that we don't necessarily need to. And we'll wrap this async here, make sure that the user is logged in and then we will uh, grab the actual user itself so if we want to be able to test this we'll need to we'll need to test this in postman to send a request let's say for example a put request to update to do and in our update we need an id and a field so we'll have our id and we'll need to grab an id there and then we'll have the fields object as well. So I'm just going to kind of format this up here. All right. So uh, that looks okay. Now we just need to grab an actual ID and I wonder if Airtable will give us an ID for this record. If we expand the record, doesn't look like we get it that way. I'm wondering, so I did a right click and then a copy record URL. And I'm thinking this last part is actually the record ID. So let's test that out and see if it works. Uh, regardless, actually, this doesn't really matter because this should kick this request out. So let's just paste that in. Let's send this and this should reject this request saying that we're not authenticated. And I think the same thing will work for a delete. So let's make a request to delete to do. And in this case, we just need an ID. Uh, and the same thing should happen here. This should get kicked out for not being logged in. All right, so that is working. So we are making sure that users are logged in before they're able to create, update, and delete records. But one th last thing that we need to make sure is that only the owners of a given record can update and delete that record. So we'll do that in the next video.